I too remember Deep Impact. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Greenland. Most of you probably had no care to watch this movie. Most of you probably didn't even remember this movie was coming out. The only reason why I remember it is because the show that I was working on was near a movie theater, and I lost track of how many times I walked past a giant Greenland poster and seen Gerard Butler's scared face. The whole time I just kept on thinking, is this just gonna be another Deep Impact? And it's actually pretty accurate to that. Just take out the whole astronaut bit, trying to be the more realistic version of Armageddon. I can't believe I just said that. This movie actually has a lot of similarities to Deep Impact if you just took out all of the space bits and you just kind of zoomed it all the way to the end. The film follows Gerard Butler as he and his estranged wife and their son basically fight to survive and trying to find a means of surviving a comet impact. They starts off with them saying that, oh, it's gonna pass by, and then stuff starts falling, and explosions happen, and then they go on this oddly grounded, yet obviously a little dramatic kind of journey to and from different places to try and survive. The first thing I will say that I was quite surprised with was how little VFX is in this movie. You know how in Armageddon, Michael Bay couldn't help but show shit blow up in that movie? I'm very honestly surprised at how little they spend time on. On these things. They are really committed to trying to tell you a story. While there isn't really that much prominent character development, the strifes and the challenges that these characters go through remind me a little bit of Tom Cruise's War of the Worlds in terms of just going from one place to another, encountering different people, different mindsets, different ideologies of survival and what is happening to them, but all of it seems kind of timid considering what's happening. I'll admit I was happy to not see any man-eating, rape-the-world cannibal groups immediately after finding out the world is over, but there are some people who do some pretty skeevy things to try and survive, but the thing that resonates with you is that you could believe these things, for the most part. Of course, there are some assholes who just are assholes for assholes sakes, but the key factor in this film is the means of survival, as well as actually being a realistic interpretation of what would happen with the military. That was probably the deepest part that I could say that happened in this movie. There is some separation, there's some challenges, but then eventually, all in all, for a movie that's near on two hours long, I'm actually really surprised at how little is in this film. Considering the last 20? Really, 15 minutes is a lot crammed in and convenience abound. Massive plot conveniences happen in the last 10 minutes of the movie. They don't even really try to address it well. They just say, yeah, whatever. Mm. But again, I'm very impressed at how little they focus on the explosions and the decimation of the world and how much they focus on just this story. It's a grounded story about what a family would do, what they would go through in an event like this. That's something that people asked for from Armageddon and Deep Impact, and you will get that from this movie. Admittedly though, there's a reason why Armageddon and Deep Impact have the space stuff going on, because that's a lot to rely off of just some survival story, and unless you portray it well, unless you show through exposition means of television, newscasters, just word of mouth, you have to have a lot of that in terms of showing how the world is progressing. A really good example actually was a movie I just started watching again for the first time in a while was Children of Men. That movie has a fantastic exposition means of introducing us to the world that the characters inhabit. This movie does it a little bit, but again, it's all very timid. It's all very mild. In the end, Greenland isn't a poorly put together film. It's actually quite commendable and it's not anywhere near as stupid as I thought it would be. It's just not memorable. If I'm going to watch something as ridiculous as this, I'm going to watch Deep Impact. So in the end, I'm going to give Greenland a 3 out of 7. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like and if you're interested in more subscribing. For those of you who are my Supernatural followers, make sure to tune in on Christmas Day because I will have a present for you guys. Anyways, that's all for me. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.